that means that means responsibility for oneself, self-reliance, but you know, our, our right to our life, our right to our liberty, our right to pursue happiness, and our right to keep what we earn, and right the fruit for the to keep our fruits of fruits of our labor. And as I go about, and the young people do not seem to be turned off with this, nor others, when I say, you know. I'm not running for this office because of what the things I want to do. I'm running for this office because I don't want to run your life. I don't want to because I don't know what you want. And I don't have the authority to do. And I don't have the authority under the Constitution. So what you do with your mind, your body, your religion, and what you take into your body or into your souls, that's your business. Just don't hurt anybody else. <laughs> And, and, this, and this, of course, means that you have freedom of choice in medicine as well, that you can, uh, you can have alternative medicine, uh, you can uh, make sure that the drug companies don't come in and over-regulate so they can make more profits over, uh, over vitamins and nutritional elements, and that we don't need the WTO to have Codex Alimentarius and all these regulations. But I also don't want to run the economy because um, I don't know how to run the economy. And I, I can tell you, I can tell you, everybody I have met so far in Washington, they don't know either. <laughs> they don't have the vaguest idea. And those few over there who think they're experts and they know what the interest rate should be, they don't know that either. The interest rate should be set by the marketplace. So I don't know how to run the economy. I don't want to. I don't have the authority to, and it's not de designated in the Constitution. And I also don't want to run the world. I don't want to run other people's lives or other people's countries. I want to, I want to encourage an environment where people can thrive and where people can travel, where people can trade and provide a sound currency, provide a, a principal position of property rights, and of course reverse the trend against the government uh, uh, ordination of uh, eminent domain. I mean, we need to reverse that as well. But there are so many things that you can do to improve the environment, which I think the founders were talking about. The general welfare is the environment that we want to include, uh, to take care of. And that means a sound currency and not, you know, a paper currency that loses its value. So uh, if, if we're able to achieve victory and I don't have anything to do, I would suggest you cut my pay. <laughs> because uh, you would have to take care of yourselves. And, uh, and our problem in this country is we've lost our faith, we've lost our confidence, we've lost our understanding. For too many decades we've been taught that the government, yes, uh, it, they have to take care of people. And the other thing that has happened over the last hundred years is the division of the concept of liberty, that there's such a thing as personal uh, political liberty and economic liberty. Why is it that in freedom of speech you can have political speech, but you don't have a right to commercial speech? Speech is speech. You know, it should be all the same. Freedom is freedom. Personal liberty is the same as economic liberty. But here we've had for decades now, somebody say, oh, I believe in economic liberty, but I'm going to tell you what you can smoke and drink, you know, and vice versa. Uh, liberty is, is one element. It has to do not with groups, it doesn't depend on what group you belong to. Uh, it depends on one thing. It depends on being an individual. And every individual has this right. And the other thing that I've noticed in the campaign, which is very encouraging, is that these concepts are really the best thing in the world to bring people together. Our crowds are very diverse and they're great because they're not confrontational. Nobody wants to tell each other what to do. Just leave me alone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and ec economically, uh, something major is happening, and I think the young people have figured it out. They claim they, di they, didn't, they don't have a good education because of the public schools, but they've learned their arithmetic very well because they know what's being, being dumped on them. And 
I think it's the whole country is becoming aware of the fact that the government no longer can solve problems, whether they're personal problems, medical problems. They, they certainly didn't do a very good job when they tried to solve the problems of New Orleans. They spent $50 billion, but look at that catastrophe. Central economic planning doesn't work. And uh, the people are realizing this, and there's no trust in the future depending on the government. And I think what the campaign has been doing and what has been happening with people like you have started clubs like this is you're starting to realize that these empty promises don't work and that the promises of liberty and the dependency and the positive attitude about what people can do you know it's a positive message it's a message of hope and it's an answer and it's not strange it's not left wing or right wing it just says people People have a right to their life and their liberty. It's American. It's what has made America great. It's constitutional. It's, it's just fantastic if we would only restart it, restart the machine, re ch get, get back to the revolutionary times and pick up the pieces. It wasn't perfect back then. There's a lot of good things that come forward. The experiment on liberty has only been going on a short period of time in all of history. And in the last hundred years, we've just about dropped it. We've lost it. It's fading away. And yet, right now, I think these ideas are being revived and people are saying, you know, there is a tradition here that's worth saving. And it is the humanitarian position. The humanitarian position is a, is a message that comes from human liberty. It does not come from authoritarian. You know, they talked about uh, the magic that, uh, that Adam Smith talked about is the invisible hand. Well, you know, unfortunately, what we have done is we've given up this invisible hand on how things work, and we've given it over to the government, and now the government is using an iron fist, and I think the American people are tired of the iron fist approach to their lives. So if we can have a decent foreign policy and a domestic policy and we, we respect liberty, to me this is the way you release a lot of creative energy and you allow people then uh, to spend their time and all their energies either wasting their lives or trying to prove, improve themselves. And uh, governments can't legislate virtue. We should strive for virtue and excellence and prosperity. And, but we should have that society that provides the greatest abundance and provides uh, the opportunities. And uh, yet what we have done, unfortunately, is we have given the role over to the government that the government will make us virtuous, the government will make us wealthy, the government will divide up the wealth properly. And since we are so wonderful, we will spread this wonderful message around the world through the barrel of a gun. That has to be totally rejected. Yep. So I would uh, close by congratulating the uh, Robert Taft Club for your perceptiveness in starting this club a uh, year ago or so. And uh, look to Robert Taft, look for what his beliefs were, because he certainly was on the right track. But just as we look back at the Constitution, we can always improve on our past, we can always improve on ourselves, but we also ought to have the goal in mind, the goal ought to always be liberty. Thank you very much. <laughs>